You can't literally run a promotion just for the the AEW, what do they call them, sickos? Yeah. If you run a promotion just for the sickos, you're going to do 400,000 viewers eventually. Like, you got to run a promotion for everybody. The sickos can be the ones that buy tickets first and spend the most money on the merchandise and, like, are the complete diehards. But, like, you got to promote for everybody. Then you'll have a lot of viewers. Hey, what's up, y'all? My name is Devontae, and I sacrificed my time so you don't have to. Did you see that intro right there? Did you see that intro? Now, personally speaking, I've never been that big of a Brian Alvarez fan, but he's been bringing up a lot of points lately. He's been doing this for the past few months. A lot of points he's been poisoned for a lot of people to at least reflect on. Now, obviously, when I talk about it, it's you're consistently attacking AEW. Which is true, because quite frankly, I want them to get better, and I want them to go ahead up with WWE. Been saying that for a while now. Now, I will say, lately, they've been doing terribly, as far as the entertainment department is considered. And, I don't know, there's a bunch of things I'm questioning now in regards to how I feel about AEW and their existence. One thing, though, that I feel that we need to talk about, who... Who is responsible for AEW in their current position? You see, a couple of months ago, I put out this video talking about Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks and how I felt like they themselves were a complete disaster based off of the things that they have implemented within the company in itself. But one thing that I have not touched on is the Young Bucks in particular and what they've done in professional wrestling in general to ruin it and then bring that influence to AEW to ruin it. You see, this is not necessarily a downfall video, because in order to have a downfall video, one will must have to be in the pinnacle. One will must have to peak. What is peaking when you're the biggest fish in the smallest pond? The Young Bucks and the way they wrestle is a bit controversial, right? One may argue that, hey, they've influenced professional wrestling and they've brought it to great heights by highlighting athleticism that has yet to be seen in professional wrestling before they started wrestling and i disagree cruiserweights have existed for the longest roh wrestlers prior to them have existed for the longest x division wrestlers have existed before them also there's a bunch of things that you could point at in regards to the young bucks making the core emphasis on professional wrestling in regards to the end ring component a standalone feature that no one else likes to dissent from and it's funny and it's very ironic that after doing so much damage to professional wrestling in regards to their end ring action that they themselves now want to play characters unfortunately the characters in their own right serve no purpose because it feels like their end ring action takes precedent over the character work and that their character work is pretty much there only to have an excuse to do the in-ring stuff let's take it back to the indies now i have not followed their career extensively in the indies but i know that they had their names ringing throughout the indie circuit back in the late 2000s to around say the mid 2010s They were known for their acrobatic, synchronized wrestling. People typically look at that and they say to themselves, what's the big deal? Well, at that time, it wasn't that big of a deal because the stark contrast to what we were getting at the time was pretty blasé because there was a lot of focus, particularly on the actual story and character development and professional wrestling. The in-ring action was not that focused on, at least not in mainstream professional wrestling. And then here you have these two guys who are putting on these quote-unquote clinics throughout the indie circuit. And as I said, the early 2010s, they got a lot of people talking, a lot of people conversating. Little known fact by some people was that the Young Bucks did wrestle in TNA for a time. They called themselves Generation Me. And they were having pretty spectacular matches with the likes of the Motor City Machine Guns and Beer Money Incorporated. They were young at the time. And as I said going off of the indie stuff they were innovative i think is the best way to use that terminology or at the very least furthering the innovation of that in-ring style 
Some call it spot monkey work. Some call it luchador. Some call it a well-rounded, um, a well-rounded in-ring style. We call it nowadays the indie style. Typically taking everything in professional wrestling from an in-ring component and turning it up to 10. And like I said, what they did in TNA wrestling was fine because nobody else was doing it at the time. And it fit the identity of the promotion, which once again, as far as a mainstream promotion in America, no one was really focusing on that in itself at the time. But as time starts to go forward and you start to see the things that they were doing on the indie circuit, it pretty much started to usurp everything in regards to what they were providing from a character development standpoint, right? You will see them put thumbtacks on their boots, super kick girls in the face, such as Kenneth LeRae. You will see them do all these ridiculous stunts. And kudos to them. They used it as a way to promote themselves and promote their brand. But nothing was necessarily catching on to a mainstream audience. It was pretty underground, which also added to the uh, illusion, if you will, of professional wrestling, at least at that point in time for the indie circuit, being a bit punk rock, right? That was the aesthetic that was tied to it, made it cool, made everybody who watched them in the indie circuit that they were dominating at the time feel like that they were special. It was very much within their own little bubble, within their own little field, within their own little niche, which made it even that much more special. But as time started to go on, we started to see a couple of professional wrestlers taking emphasis from what they were doing and bringing it up to the mainstream platforms like WWE, for an example, right? NXT is probably the more better example than anything else in regards to what they were doing from the indie perspective that influenced a lot of talent that went to NXT. And they themselves started to do much more of the ROH indie style professional wrestling that these guys were leading. And like I said, they're a huge influence when it comes to things like that. To a detriment, one may argue, as time goes on, we'll see that take effect. Clearly, there was a change in professional wrestling that everybody wanted to adjust themselves to because they felt that the current product from WWE, who for all intents and purposes were a step below having a monopoly on the wrestling industry, were portraying for most wrestling fans to consume. And I can see why you have so many fans, at least um, one may say disenfranchised friends or fans who wanted to look in that direction right like i said he brought in nxt in order to bring in some of those fans and then obviously their tour in new japan pro wrestling accelerated that and then out comes aew that they themselves and cody rhodes co-signed on with tony khan and eventually brought up the likes of Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho, who also co-signed on all of this. The elite were born, right? And one may say that the wrestling alongside of the clothing, the branding of the elite moniker, all this stemming from Japan, added to the influence of the independent mindset of the Young Bucks. But, but they never got away from the indie style that brought them to the table that everybody seems as if that they were pretty much taking and doing themselves right to accelerate their careers again there was a very diy ethic that was attached to this that i can absolutely respect but as i said aew was created and the problem with the aew promotion with them pretty much heading this whole operation was that they took what at this point was starting to become cliche before it even hit the mainstream fully, and they made it the entire aesthetic of the company in itself. Highlighted by the things that they were promote, highlighted by the wrestlers that they were promote, highlighted by the people that they were bring in. It was essentially de-emphasizing all the things that made professional wrestling professional wrestling, right? And even further, one may even argue as far as their influences on professional wrestling, their influences on AEW, it took away from the things that made professional wrestling 
prominence, if you will. Gone were the days of casual wrestling fans washing larger than life talent, charismatic larger than life talent, put on a display of Shakespearean storytelling that you would typically only get in movies and television shows. Gone were the days of the pomp and circumstances of fireworks and signs all over the place. Not to say that that was their fault, but it's to suggest that the higher ups in professional wrestling were taking notice to this whole new thing going on in professional wrestling that kind of felt like it can substitute for all the decorum and all of the pageantry of professional wrestling. And like I said, AEW was a thing. And as the years started to go on, they started to rely more and more and more of what brought them to the table. And even even the AEW audience were starting to catch on to the grift. They were starting to get booed. No longer could they rely on their in-ring prowess because unfortunately, Even AEW recognizes that that can only bring you so far. The unfortunate part, though, and this is where their influence starts to take more of a negative turn. It's almost like a drug to a certain degree. You know, you start off with cigarettes, then eventually weed. And then eventually that's not enough because you need to get that high. And you start to go more hardcore and more hardcore and more hardcore and more hardcore. Not everybody. Some people can get it under control. Others can't. The sickos can't. And the problem with that mindset when it starts to take heed is that you want more of what you already have. You want more of what's already negatively impacting your field of vision. And with the Young Bucks, that was the wrestling. So even though what they brought to the table one may argue fit the identity of what AEW represented is something that wrestling fans have seen enough of and they've seen other talent that usurped the Young Bucks in that category. It wasn't asking for an alternative in regards to, well, can we have something else that's completely different from the Young Bucks? It's we need more of what the Young Bucks is already doing times 10. And what the Young Bucks are already doing is something that's already detrimental. So you start getting all these matches proposed, done, gimmicked by the Young Bucks, who are the uh, executive vice presidents of AEW alongside Kenny Omega. And their influence have now taken precedent on professional wrestling in general. And the unfortunate part about all this is, like I said, what made professional wrestling substantial, what actually grabbed your attention was now gone. But even worse, the people who wanted that on the indie circuit, they've now brought to the mainstream. And this whole little thing that they brought up with them is what was rejected for so long by mainstream professional wrestling because at least at the time they knew the detriment that it had on the business and they knew that it couldn't last for too long there's only so much you can do when you go from cigarettes to heroin is pretty much what they were saying to themselves metaphorically speaking and what happens as the years start to go on with the young bucks in a leadership position and uh unfortunately Their little in-ring style, not really holding the attention of most people. Knowing that the people are the way in order to get over is to get a bigger pop at that time frame rather than a bigger pop sustained for the littlest things as time goes on. And comes CM Punk. A guy who wants to bring AEW to heights that it's never been before to actually compete with WWE. Recognizing that that's that's gonna have to take... That's going to take a lot of time and that's going to take a lot of change, not just change, just in the mentality of the professional wrestlers and themselves who want to keep the status quo of what they're currently doing right now that has made AEW its identity. 
but just the mentality of the entire business that's currently plaguing professional wrestling. And it's not just guys like CM Punk. Cody Rhodes also was along the road and along the ride with CM Punk to establish this change that the Young Bucks and maybe even Kenny Omega vehemently denied and was against. And all the backstage ongoings trying to position what should be the right thing going forward for AEW caused a bunch of backstage rifts, if you will, with guys like Cody Rhodes and with guys like CM Punk. Clearly going against the grain, knowing that what they were currently doing at the moment was terrible. It negatively impact viewership numbers. It negatively impact ratings. A decline in audience retention. Because when you consistently do the same thing over and over again. Do you want to eat the same food over and over again? I'll put it that way. No matter how much you like it. Would you like to eat the same meal over and over again for the next few months, for the next few years? Or would you like a bit of diversity? I think you will probably take the the latter, but maybe I'm just the one that's out of sync here. Maybe I'm too old for maybe I'm too old for some of you guys nowadays, but I digress though. We get to a point where there's a falling out with Cody Rhodes and he takes off. And it feels like all that's left standing in between AEW and success, (sighs) leave it up to the Young Bucks, is CM Punk. And we have a bit of a fork in the road situation where you can go towards their direction or towards CM uh, CM Punk's direction. And unfortunately, you have guys like Kenny Omega, who I feel has, in my opinion, further the destruction of AEW, but willing to understand that there's a lot of money to be made in star power and not just the wrestling in itself. Unfortunately, the Young Bucks didn't see it that way. And with all the trials and tribulations that pretty much they use in order to get Cody Rose out of the company, they try to do the same thing to CM Punk. And it worked. It worked. It took a minute. It took a lot of pushing. Their denial to work with CM Punk in order to make money. Their denial of reality consistent consistently causing rifts along with CM Punk to a certain degree he's not an angel in this situation but a divide and uh not necessarily conquer because it's AEW but dividing the roster the wrestlers the friends from doing business with each other knowing that if you were to actually concede and let your egos go wayside. You can make a bunch of money and bring this company to the promised land where it feels is right there at the cups or the cusp. Nevertheless, though, that didn't work out all too well. And CM Punk left the company. And what did the Young Bucks do? Did they, at the very least, take what happened in the whole CM Punk situation and use it for the betterment of AEW? No, they instead made a mockery of it. They instead made a mockery of it. And what we got with CM Punk leaving was a lot of exposing. A lot of exposing of the years of nonsense promoted by the Young Bucks on the indie circuit. Nonsense that included nothing but five-star matches and curtailing their opinion to one Dave Meltzer. And that's their opinion, obviously, in the end of the day. But what did it benefit? Well, you tell me, we're still feeling the effects of this very day, am I right? Their one chance at glory with an actual bona fide superstar, they ruined because they wanted to keep up with what they were already doing, which is pretty much being a cancer to AEW, relying on the things that brought them to the table, but is now starting to expose them for what they brought to the table. And like I said, They attempted to give themselves characters, give themselves something of a semblance regarding the story. But what have they done with those characters? What have they done with that story? Had a bunch of promise. 2024 is when they turned. What have they done? Nothing. And they contributed nothing. You see, the story of AEW 
was painted in the picture of how the Young Bucks wanted it to be painted out as. They wanted it to be painted out as a promised land, a home base for talent who have no talent to come and do the bare minimum and get the pops when the pops matter to them being in the moment rather than lingering over time. They brought their friends up with them in order to push their agenda. And again, where has it gotten them? Again. Metrics say otherwise. Data points say otherwise. You see, the the Young Bucks in the end of the day have been a detriment to professional wrestling. They have been a parasite to professional wrestling. They have sucked the life out of professional wrestling. And the worst part about it is it just came at the behest of what they wanted to promote. It was never them having to align with the traditions of professional wrestling. It was making professional wrestling align with their tradition of spots, of false finishes, of doing what they can do in order to get the pop. Never anything to actually affect the company and change within the company. Only change within the amount of zeros in their paycheck. They're the worst things that have ever happened to professional wrestling, bar none. Their influence, the creation of AEW, that's nothing more than a facade for actual change. And them actually performing in the company and doing what they do best, which is sucking off the tit of success, making sure that tit is run dry, and gaslighting people as to why it's a good thing that this tit is now ran dry. I don't blame them exclusively. Obviously. People actually listen to them. People actually follow them. But to pretend as if they aren't the Pied Pipers, to pretend as if they're not the headlights and the light providing you to see when driving through the darkness and then unexpectedly going out and then you crash... Sure, you're the one driving. But really, whose fault was it? I'll leave this with you guys. Few thoughts, final thoughts when it comes to the Young Bucks. Notice how I'm not yelling. Notice how I'm not screaming. Notice how I'm talking pretty cerebral when talking about this subject. Because I want my point to be heard and I want it to be heard clear. Are the Young Bucks the main reason why professional wrestling is dying? One may make an argument. You can say yes. You can say no. That depends on your prerogative. That that depends on your priority when it comes to professional wrestling. But one thing you can't argue is that they themselves, they instituted change. The question is, for better or for worse? I'm more inclined to say worse. Don't believe me? Look at what look at what they built and look at the metrics that coincide with it. My name is Devante, and I'll be catching you guys later. Deuces P Ice.